Hello friends, my name is Dan Vega and I'm a Spring Developer Advocate for VMware. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new guide that I created along with my friend and coworker Mario Gray on dependency injection in Spring. So we're just going to jump right in. We're going to talk a little bit about what dependency injection is and then this is a guide that we'll walk through together, a practical example that we'll do, create a new Spring Boot project from scratch and talk about dependency injection and how it fits into Spring. Uh, so if you want to follow along, head over to tanzu.vmware.com slash developer, go to the learn drop down, hit guides and find the spring dependency injection guide. Also, the guide will be linked below in the description as well as the GitHub repository with all of the backing code. So with that, let's get into it. So here in the guide, uh, first things first, we talk about what dependency injection is. Really, it's the glue that binds your application components together. Uh, it has a lot of uh, things that it will help a developer with, things like code decoupling, testability is a big one, maintainability. Uh, we go into a little bit of what inversion of control is. Again, inversion is really thinking of the, uh, instead of you controlling the instantiation of components or classes in your application, we're kind of flipping the inversion, we're inversing that control uh, and letting the uh, Spring Framework kind of take over control of that. So we talk about that and then a little bit of a, a useful dependency injection approach here. Then what we'll do is we'll go into this guide and this is what we're going to walk through together here. Uh, before you begin, things that you need to know, the Spring Boot application you're going to follow along with uses Java 17. If you don't have Java 17 installed, please install it. You should have a basic understanding of Java. You should have a basic understanding of Spring Boot. Uh, if you need help with those things, uh, my channel has a bunch of resources. The Tanzu Developer Center has a bunch of resources. Spring.io has a, a ton of great resources. And again, the final code you can see at the GitHub repo here. So to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to head over to start.spring.io. Uh, we're going to create a simple model around the idea of a blog. A blog is a place where you can write and publish new articles for others to read. Uh, so we're going to be creating the REST API for that application, which can be consumed by a front end later on. So to start, let's head over to start.spring.io, fill in the metadata about the project. So it'll just be, uh, we'll call it a demo. Uh, you can fill in your own uh, group ID, use the latest stable version, Java 17. And then the only thing we'll need is uh, Spring Web. So let's do that. I have... Uh, our spring, our 2.7.4, we're having a Maven project here with Java. So we'll say dev.danvega, we'll call it demo. Uh, actually, let's just call it blog. And then we're using Java 17, and the only dependency we'll need is Spring Web. So we'll go ahead and select that. Once we're done, we're going to hit generate. This will download a zip file for us. You can go ahead and open it up in whatever IDE or text editor you're comfortable using. I'm going to open it up in IntelliJ Ultimate. That is my favorite IDE. All right, so we're going to build out a simple API that allows anyone to get a list of articles in the system or get the details for a single article. So before we can go ahead and create the API, we need a class that represents a single article in the application. This could be a new class. But since we're uh, on Java 17, we can go ahead and use a record. So I'm going to create a new package in here. We're going to go ahead and call this model. And inside of that model, I will go ahead and create a new Java class called article. Again, this could be a class, but I'm going to use a record. So this record is going to have a few properties. We're going to have an integer of ID, uh, an, an integer type. Uh, the name of the property is going to be ID. We're going to have a title of type string. We'll have another string for content and we'll have a local date time for published on. So I think that's really all we need to get started. With the model in place, you need a place to kind of store all the articles that you are going to write for your blog. In the real world, you would use most likely something like a database to per persist your articles. But just to keep it simple, what I want to do is just use an in-memory data structure so we could focus on the dependency injection aspects and not worry about kind of the database. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new package in here. We'll call this repository. And in here, I'll create a new class called the article repository. And 
the repository comes from the repository pattern. And you're going to see this pattern a lot as you start building applications in Spring or you taking advantage of something like Spring Data. Uh, there's a really good definition of a repository on Martin Fowler's website. And really, it, it mediates between the domain and the data mapping layers using a collection-like interface for accessing domain objects. Now, we aren't exactly doing that, but um, it, can, it can kind of represent that pattern. So all we're going to do in this article repository is we're going to say that we're going to have a private list of articles. And we'll go ahead and call this articles. And we may instantiate this to a new array list. And then in our, um, we may have a couple methods in here, right? So we may have something to uh, go ahead and get all of the articles. So maybe I want something called find all to return um, all of those articles. And then maybe I have a method to return a single article. And we may uh, have this called find by ID, which takes in an integer ID. And then what we'll do is we will go ahead and turn the articles into a stream so that we can then filter on this. And we can say, hey, of the articles, I want to go and find the article.id that is equal to the ID that we passed in. Um, so then we find that, and then we go ahead and find the first one, or else we return null. So that should give us a way to find all the articles in this collection and find a single article in this collection. All right, we need a way to go ahead and initialize the list of articles so that we have some sample data to work with. The constructor of a Java class is really a great place to start, and I'm going to create three new articles and add them to the collection of articles. So actually, I'm not going to instantiate it here. We'll just go ahead and copy this in. Uh, we'll have an article repository constructor, which says, hey, set the articles to a list out of, and then pass in three new articles. So we have our ID, we have our titles, our content, and then our local date time now, which is going to be used for the published uh, on field. All right, and so with the domain model and repository in place, it's time to create a REST controller. This, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to, again, come over here. We're going to create a new package. I'm going to call this controller. And inside of here, I'm going to create a new REST controller. We'll call this Java class article controller. And again, this is done by convention. This isn't something you have to do, but usually you take the resource that you're working with, in this case article, and add the suffix of controller on it. If you're new to building REST APIs in Spring Boot, don't worry about this stuff. Uh, I don't want to get too caught in the weeds of this, but the way that we tell this class that it's going to be a REST controller is by marking it with the at REST controller annotation. And then we set up a request mapping, which is, hey, what is the path for this particular resource? In this case, if you wanted to hit it, you would go to slash API slash articles. And again, that just kind of the infrastructure of setting up a REST controller in Spring Boot. All right, so now your controller needs a way to retrieve all of the articles in the application. So you already created that class, right? You have that article uh, repository. But in your controller, you need an instance of that, right? So how, how does that get created? The basic constructs of Java, the language, tells us that, hey, we can do that by creating a new instance of the article repository in the constructor, right? So I think that, was, that would be the first kind of instinct to kind of get an instance of that, right? So we may create a private final article repository, article repository, and uh, we may go ahead and say public article, uh, whoops, public article controller. And in here we may say this dot article repository is equal to new article repository, right? So if we've done any kind of Java work in the past, this is how we go ahead and instantiate a new instance of that class in our constructor. And now that you have an instance of the article repository, you can use the methods from there that you created already 
to return a list of articles or a single article. So what we can do is we can come down and say, hey, um, for a Git mapping, again, this is kind of REST controller, plumbing infrastructure stuff. This just says, hey, at API slash articles, this is the method that I want you to go ahead and execute. And in that case, I wanna return a list of articles. So I'm gonna say list article, find all, and all we're gonna do is return the article repositories find all method because that returns the entire collection. Then I might have a git mapping for something like slash ID. The little bra braces there say that that is going to be dynamic. And so I'll return an article. We'll call this find by ID. This is going to take in that I dynamic variable uh, called ID from the path. So we use the path variable annotation to say get that for me. And then all we're going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and say, hey, uh, return the article repositories find by ID and pass in that ID. So now if we go into our main application and run our application, if everything starts up OK, we should be able to go over to the browser and visit localhost 8080 slash API slash articles and we see our three articles listed. So again, if you just go to a browser and hit a path there, we're performing a get request. And so that get request by default in the controller method is set up here. And so that get method returns all of them. And then if we want a specific one, we could just come in here and say, give me the details for article one. And there's our first article. All right, so with that in place, I think we can start to talk about what dependency injection is and how it's going to help us improve our application. So I want to start by creating a controller unit test. I love writing tests for so many reasons, but one of the advantages that they give us is the ability to expose problems in our code. This could be by informing us that our business logic is incorrect, the particular unit of code we are testing does more than it should, or just pointing out holes in the structure of our code and, and there's so much more to it. So to ensure that our blog API is working correctly, we're gonna create a unit test for that controller. Um, in the unit test, we're gonna specifically focus on what you will hear as a set or system under test, which is in this case, just the article controller. This means that any dependencies outside of the article controller, such as other classes, services, repositories, any of those things should be mocked because we don't care what those things do. All we really care about is the article controller. So um, if your article repository talked to something like a real database, you wouldn't want to include that as part of the test, right? Um, that, that is just designed to test the controller, you would want to mock that out. So let's start by creating a simple unit test of this controller. Uh, here in IntelliJ, I can go ahead and say create a test, and I'm going to call that the article controller test, and it's going to go ahead and create this test for me. We're using JUnit, JUnit 5, so it brings in all of those assertions for me. And let's talk about creating just a simple unit test here. So I may say I have an article controller. We'll call that article controller. Actually, let's slim that down a little and call this controller. And then I may have a before each, so I can say um, a setup method. And what I wanna do in the setup method is I wanna go ahead and create an instance of that new article controller. So once I do that, um, I'm going to go ahead and test that all the articles are returned back. So I might say uh, at test void should return all articles. And here we are going to assert equals. Uh, we should have three articles that come back. So we want to say controller dot find all. That's actually going to return um, an iterable. So we may say um, the splitterator dot get exact size if known. So that should be able to test to see if all of the articles are there. And oh, and why did I put two? We need to check to see if there are three. And let's write one more test. We may um, say should return article with valid ID. And so what we're going to do is say article 
article is equal to let's say controller dot find by ID and let's pass in a valid ID so you don't want to pass in an invalid one so that'd be one two or three and then we just want to say assert not null so we want to make sure we get back a not null object and that should be that so let's go ahead and run these tests and see if they all work and they do so at first glance you might say, uh, okay, everything we're doing is working so far. But let's take a look at what's going on here. When we say controller equals new article controller, what is happening here in the constructor in our article controller class? We are saying this dot article repo repository is equal to a new article repository. So whenever we run this test, because we are calling new article controller, we are essentially calling this constructor, which creates a new article repository. Again, what if that article repository talked to a database? We wouldn't want that, right? Like we are testing just the article controller. Those are outside dependencies that we would want to go ahead and mock. And so I think this gives us a little bit of an insight as to what our problem is here. But let's go ahead and compound the problem a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and close out all of these classes and open back up this article. And I'm going to go ahead and put these record components on separate lines. I want to talk about a slug service. So you'll often find that articles or blog posts contains what's known as a slug. A slug is the unique identifying part of a web address, typically at the end of a URL. While an ID is typically used to identify an article in the database, it isn't very helpful to send that ID as part of the URL. So if you go to my blog, danvega.dev slash blog, you wouldn't see slash blog slash 1234, right? You would see what is the name of the article, like hello-world. So that is usually what a slug is. Um, and I, what I want to do is go ahead and add a slug to our blog application here. So right after uh, title, I want to go ahead and create a slug. And now we need to add a slug to this. So how are we going to uh, make a slug? Well, I think what we're going to do first is we're going to create a class that can take in the title of an article and return a slug. There's a lot that goes into creating a slug. But for now, what we're going to do is just create a simple, simple slug service. And then to ensure that we are not tied to the simple slug service in the future, what I want to do is start with the interface. So we'll start with a, a slug interface, so slug service. And then what we can do is we can create a simple slug service for now that just kind of hyphenates it. And then maybe we come back later and create a more advanced one that can do some, some trickier things, right? So let's start with the service. So I'm going to create a new package. I'm going to call this service. And inside this service, we're going to create a new Java class, and we're going to call this slug service. And again, this is going to be an interface. So we just want one method in here. Uh, this is going to return a string. We're going to call this slugify. And this will take in an input of type string. All right, so now that we have that, uh, we can go ahead and create something like a simple slug service that is going to implement that interface. Again, this is a simplified version of what Slugify might do, uh, but it'll be sufficient for what we're trying to do here. So let's go ahead and create a new Java class. We'll call this Simple Slug Service. And this Simple Slug Service is going to go ahead and implement Slug Service. Now, because we're implementing that, we need to go ahead and implement that single method. To save a little time, I'm going to go ahead and paste some code in here. We're going to say this is an input. And what we'll do is we'll take whatever you send this method. We will convert it to lowercase. Then we'll do a little bit of regex replacing. So we'll replace all the special characters except a space. And we're going to replace that with nothing. We, we want the spaces if they're there. And then what we want to do is replace all the spaces with hyphens. So that will take something like, um, let's see, let's, let's do something here. So that will take like a title like Hello World, replace all the special characters. So there'll be no comma, no exclamation point. 
and it, there'll be just one space and it will convert it to lowercase and replace that space with something like that. So cool, there is our simple slug service. Um, now that we have a simple slug service, we need an instance of that in our article repository class. So let's head over to our article repository class. And as we did uh, in the controller, we can create a new instance of this class in our constructor. Uh, in this case, we'll use the interface as the type in case we want to replace that with a more sophisticated version of the Slugify service later. So what I will do is I will come in here and I will say private final slug service. Again, we're using the type, the interface type. We'll call this slug service. And then what happens here in our controller, or I'm sorry, in our constructor, what I want to say is this dot slug service is equal to new simple slug service. So now we have an instance of it. Now we can use it when we are going to go ahead and start creating all these articles here in the controller. All right, so now for each of these articles, I need to go ahead and say uh, slug service dot slugify and then whatever the title is. Here I'm doing some repeating of titles, which I shouldn't do. If you go back to the article itself, I actually have a cleaner method for just declaring the titles once, um, but you'll get the idea. Uh, we're just gonna do this here for the sake of simplicity. So I have initializer, and then let's just copy this, and we'll say slug service dot slugify. And that should now satisfy all of our three articles. Cool. Let's go ahead and restart this application. And restart. And then everything looks good. Let's head back to the browser and then just look at all of our articles. And we can see now that we have a slug in there. So hello world, spring initializer, spring dependency injection. Okay, so I want to open back up this test that we wrote earlier. So we have a controller, an article controller test. And as you can imagine, you're going to have the same problem testing the article repository that you did when testing the article controller. To make matters worse, back in our controller test, we're creating a new instance of the article uh, controller here, which in turn creates an instance of the article repository, which as you can imagine, in turn, creates a new instance of the simple slug service. Now, instead of doing a simple unit test of the controller, you have done a full integration test across multiple components of the application. And this is just one issue that you're gonna come across when, it's not just a testing issue, but this really starts to highlight the problem. Anytime you start creating new instances yourself, you are highly coupled to that uh, code. Um, so you cannot create a controller without creating a new instance of the repository. And so that makes things a little bit difficult. It will make your code, as we pointed out in the article, uh, highly, decoupled, or highly coupled. It will uh, become a maintenance nightmare if you have to change one thing down the line. Uh, there's a lot of things that can start to become really hard to maintain here. So we're going to talk about dependency injection to the rescue. So now that we've defined the problem, let's talk a, let's talk a little bit about how we can fix this. And I think a starting point to solving this problem would be to take a look at the article controller. So let's back out of here and take a look at the article controller. So instead of creating a new instance of the article repository here, maybe what we can do is accept an argument to the constructor of that type. So let's say article repository, and we'll call this article repository. So now what we want to do, instead of saying this dot article repository is equal to new article repository, 
we'll just set it to whatever was passed in as the uh, article repository. So now right now, that is not going to work, right? Because uh, we have some other things calling this controller. So let's head back to our article controller test. And this is going to be where the problem is, right? Because in our setup, we're creating a new instance of the article controller. And we don't have a repository instance to pass in to that controller yet. Again, that is yet. So I'm going to do a couple things here. Uh, in my test, I'm going to say that this is going to be an, a web MVC test. This is what's known as a slice test. And it allows us just to kind of bring all of the classes that are uh, created and set in the application context that revolve around a controller test. It doesn't load the entire application, just the kind of bits that are relevant. And the reason I do that is what I want to do here is I want to create a mock. So we're not going to go too, do too far down this rabbit hole here, but as I said, when you're creating a test of an article controller, you want to mock any outside dependencies like that article repository. So I'm going to say the article repository is something that we're going to mock, and now that we have a mock of that, we can pass that into our article controller. So, so far, so good. Now, if we mock this, we essentially have no data, right? Because in the article repository, we created three new articles. We don't have that anymore. We have a mock of that, a stub of that. We don't have actually any articles. So what I want to do is add a little code here that is going to help us out. So I'm going to create a new list of articles. So we'll say right here, we have a list of articles, which is equal to a new array list. And in here, we're going to say articles is equal to a list.of, and we're just going to create a single article. Again, it takes in an ID, a title, a slug, uh, content, and the time it was published. So now we have one article to focus on in our tests. What we then do is because we've mocked our repository, in any tests that are going to use it, we provide a scenario for when that particular uh, class is called and when a particular method is called. So what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, makito.when, and we're going to say when the repositories find all method is called, what I want you to do is just return the list of articles that we created above. So essentially, that's just going to create uh, return an, uh, a collection with one article in it. And now I can say that I'm just going to expect one article. Uh, down here, I'm going to say pretty much the same thing. Makito.when the repositories find by ID method is called. And when it, uh, when it accepts the uh, argument one, I want you to go ahead and return articles.get, um, and then there's only one article in there, so it's going to return that one. So now when controller.findById is called, there is a repository in there that is mocked, and so we're mocking that method, and we're saying, hey, when that's called, return this. So now if we go ahead and run this article controller test, everything passes, but again, this is much cleaner. This is a true unit test now. Well, again, define true. We are loading some of the Spring application context. This is closer to a unit test. Uh, we are just saying, hey, any outside dependencies of the controller, like the repository and that slug service, because we're mocking that too, right? Um, well, we haven't yet, um, but we will. Um, and you know all of those outside dependencies, we don't care about testing those. All I care about is testing is the controller, right? So this gets us better. We are getting closer because we are no longer, again, anytime you, you see that new keyword in a constructor in a class in Spring, there's probably a better way to do it. And that's by, again, coming back to that term inversion of control, inversing the control. We are not no longer in charge of creating our own instances of classes. We are asking Spring to do that. Spring is going to create an instance of this for us, 
and then we are going to ask it for an instance, right? In this case, we haven't done that yet. We, we mocked something and passed it in, but I'm gonna show you how this works now. So again, that worked for a test. Let's go ahead and try and run our application and see if that works. So that didn't start up. It says parameter zero of constructor in article controller required a bean of type article repository that could not be found. So that couldn't be found. And it's giving us some help here. It's saying, hey, consider defining a bean of type article repository in your configuration. So it's giving us a hint as to what we need to do. There is no, even though there's an article repository class here that we've created, Spring doesn't know about it. So Spring needs to be told, hey, I, you need to tell me to manage this for you. The way that we do that in Spring is by using an annotation or a specialized version of this annotation called component. So component just, if we dig into component, component just says, hey, it indicates that this class is a component. Such classes are considers, considered as candidates for auto detection when using annotation-based configuration. So Spring will see this and go, oh, this is something you want me to manage for you. I can do that. There are also things like um, REST controller, which we saw. There is a controller. There's a service. There's a repository. So any of those, if you dig into those specialized versions of this, you will see them marked with at component. At the end of the day, at component is what drives this configuration for us. So now with this marked as an at repository, let's go ahead and run our application again. And now it starts without error. And that's because when Spring wants to go and create an instance of this article controller for you, it sees that it accepts a type of article repository and it goes, oh, you meant article repository? You told me about that class. I have a type called auto article repository. I will go ahead and inject that for you. That is because this is a dependency in this article and Spring is going to do the injection for you. And that is where dependency injection comes from. So we're just gonna fix up one more thing here. If we go into our simple slug service, um, we can, we again, back in our art article repository, we're creating a new instance of this. We don't wanna do that. We wanna actually accept a slug service as an argument that's similar to what we did in the article controller. And so if we do that and we set this equal to slug service, um, this is what we're going for. But again, if we try and start the application, Spring's gonna go, I don't know what a slug service is. I don't know, I don't have any of those in my application context. So again, what you need to do is just come up here and mark this with at component or one of those specialized versions of component. And now when Spring, when we start up the application, Spring will understand that, hey, I have one of those. I'll go ahead and inject that for you into the article repository. All right, and that's all we have. Congratulations on making it through the entire guide and learning the basics of dependency injection in Spring. You learned a very fundamental core concept that is at the heart of building all applications in Spring. If you can understand this, you have one of the building blocks that you're gonna need to build Spring applications. Uh, if you wanna learn more about dependency injection, in the guide, we have a link to the Spring Framework documentation. There is a lot of really good stuff in the documentation. I think you just need this kind of introduction to introduce you to it first, and then uh, the documentation might make a little bit more sense, but it goes into the weeds of, all right, um, we use that at component, what are beans, how do beans fit into the uh, concept of an application context. Again, these are fancy terms that once you start to understand some of this stuff, beans are just classes that are managed by Spring. Application context is just this pool of beans that it's managing for you. And once you kind of get your head wrapped around some of that, it, it all starts to make sense. So 
go through this. I hope you did this with us today. If you didn't, um, one of the things I always like to do is take a demo like this that I watched and apply it to a different type of tutorial. So we did a blog here today. Do something that you're working on. Maybe you're building out the next Twitter or the next Facebook, or maybe you're building a recipe app or something to track your exercise routine. Uh, take this and apply it to that and see if you can start to understand how to use dependency injection in Spring. I think that kind of helps reinforce this. So uh, on behalf of Mario and myself, we really hope you enjoyed this guide. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, you got value from it, do me a favor, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, friends, happy coding. Hey, 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 hey.